Hi, it's Chester at Blue PK and Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at how to find numbers within a range. We're going to look at three different methods of doing this. The first one is with the normal filter functionality within Excel. And that allows you within a numeric field to specify a criteria on which you're going to filter your list. And you'll see here there's a between option. So we'll look at that and see how that works. The second method uses the new filter function in Excel 365. So for example, over here, I can specify a range of transaction values on which to filter or find particular transactions within the table on the left here. If I change the minimum value, say to 80 pounds and the maximum value to 90, you can see it changes the transactions that it returns in this smaller table here. The third method actually uses a lookup function. And the scenario here is where you're trying to look up a value within a range of values. So here I'm trying to work out the bonus for each of my sales staff. And here are the thresholds for each bonus. So for example, 0 to 9,000. 999, you get no bonus, then 10,000 to 14,999, you get 150. So we'll look at how you can use VLOOKUP in this way. Okay, let's get started with the filter option. Now what filtering does is temporarily hide records that don't meet your criteria. And you can use filters with the little drop downs at the top of each column. And the easiest way to get those drop downs is to click in any cell within your data and use the shortcut key control shift L. And that'll give you the little drop downs at the top of each column. I'll just undo that and I'll show you a button for it as well. There are actually lots of buttons that give you the drop downs, but probably the easiest is to go to data here and then use this filter button. Now, what I want to do is filter based on transaction values. I only want to show transaction values between 80 and 100. So I go to the drop down for transaction values. I go to number filters. I go to between. And then I just put in my lower threshold, which was 80, and my upper threshold, which is 100. And I click on OK. And there we are. I get those relevant transactions. To clear a filter, you just go back up to this little drop down, which you can see a little funnel icon now and then you clear the filter there. Okay, let's move on to the second method. And this uses the filter function, which is available in Excel 365. Now what I've done is I've already copied over the column headings in my original table. And then I only need to write a formula in one cell when I'm using filter, and it will spill its results out into surrounding cells. Now before I use the filter function, I would convert this data into an Excel table. So if you click in any cell in the data and use the shortcut key control T, that will just ask you to confirm where your data is. Click on OK. You get an extra tab on your ribbon, table design, where you can give your table a name. So I'll call this transactions. Press enter to confirm. Okay, so over here, I'm going to write my filter function. The array is the transactions table. So if I start typing it, it appears in the IntelliSense list. And I can just double click on it there to complete that name. Comma, include. Now this is where we set our criteria. What we need to do in this include argument is specify that the transaction value must be greater than or equal to the minimum value we specify in K2 and less than or equal to the maximum value we specify in M2. So this is how we do that. First of all, we need to refer to the transaction value column and we can start doing that by specifying the table it's in. Then you open a square bracket and you get a list of columns in your table. So I will specify transaction value there, close the bracket. And what I'm going to do is say that that has got to be greater than or equal to the 
minimum value I specify in K2. That needs to go in brackets. And then I put in a multiply symbol because I'm going to specify an additional criteria. So the multiplication symbol in this context is used when you have and criteria. Both this criteria and the maximum criteria need to be true. So I open another bracket and I specify the transaction table again, open a square bracket, transaction value column again, close the square bracket, less than or equal to M2. Close around bracket. Now the last argument in filter is non-mandatory if empty, and that's the value you want to return if no transactions are returned by your criteria. So I'll put no transactions found. Close the bracket at the end, press enter, and it spills its results into surrounding cells. And if I change the criteria here, let's say 30 to 80, it returns the correct number of transactions in this table. Okay, let's move on to the third and final method using VLOOKUP. So slightly different scenario here. What I need to do is calculate the bonus for each of our sales staff. And we have target thresholds here, and we will be looking for these sales values within the ranges specified in this column. So let me just make it clear how these ranges are working. The first range would be 0 to 9,999. The second range would be 10,000 to 14,999. And then the third range would be 15,000 to 19,999. Hopefully you can see the pattern there. And when you're using VLOOKUP, these values do have to be in ascending order. But this is how it would work. You'd go VLOOKUP, I'd look up my sales value in this table array, which I'd need to fix because I'm going to be copying the formula down. Col index number is the column I'm returning values from. So it's actually the position of the column. And the position of that column is two second column within my table array and then you just close the bracket now you may when you've used vlookup before put in false or zero in your last argument there but if you don't it performs what it calls an approximate match and that is the type of match we want in this scenario if i copy this down you can see it always returns the correct bonus Twenty-one thousand lies in the range 20 to 24,999, so you get 250 pound bonus. Now, if you do have Excel 365, you can do it in a slightly different way with XLOOKUP. Exactly the same scenario, but the difference here is that the target column doesn't have to be in ascending order. It can be in descending order or in no order at all, and it will still work. So XLOOKUP would work like this. What you would do with XLOOKUP, or what you can do at least, is rather than just select one lookup value, select them all. The lookup array is the column you're cross-referencing with. So that's F3 to F8 in this context. Comma, the return array is the column that you're borrowing values from. That's G3 to G8. If not found, is a value that you want to return if no match is found we'll leave that blank in this context for match mode which is the next argument we are going to use this option here exact match or next smaller item so what that means is it'll either look for an exact match for 21,309 which you won't find or it will find the next smaller item which would be 20,000 therefore it will return 250 pounds if I close the bracket, press enter, you can see it spills all the results without me having to copy into the surrounding cells. I will give you another XLOOKUP example. Here, we need to calculate the postage cost for our package weight. Now, the way we calculate the cost is that the maximum weight for the 520 pound cost is 100 grams. The Maximum weight for the £8.10 service is £250. 
maximum weight for the £13.50 service is 500 grams. So for example, with a 120 gram parcel, we have to pay £8.10. So how would this work? I'd have to use XLOOKUP for this. VLOOKUP won't be able to do this particular calculation. So I'd look up my package weights, comma. My lookup array would be the weight thresholds in the other table, comma. And the return array would be the costs. If not found, we'll leave blank. And then my match mode would be exact match or next larger item. In the previous example, we used exact match or next smaller item, but not so for this one. Hopefully you can see why that is. So 120 grams. We don't want that to return £5.20. Unfortunately, we have to pay £8.10, so we have to go to the next larger item. So if I close the bracket there, press enter, you can see it returns the correct postage costs. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.